Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for April 3rd, 2023. Glad that you are with me. We are in the season of Holy Week. Let's go ahead and get started. Today is Independent Artist Day. World Cloud Security Day. World Party Day. A drop of water is a grain of gold. American Circus Day, and Armenian Appreciation Day. So let's go ahead and get started. Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. That's not right. Today, our reading is the parable of the unforgiving servants from Matthew chapter 18, starting with verse 23. Let's go ahead and uh, listen for God's word to speak to you. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began to the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possession, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. Out of pity for him. The Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. Seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you. You do not forgive your brother or sister sibling from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, uh, tough, (laughs) tough parable. But to put it in context, we've been talking about a lot of different things. This whole conversation started when the disciples asked Jesus, who's greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He brings before them a child and says, If you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, you have to do so with humility, like this child, become like this child. And the greatest in the kingdom of heaven is the one who does not uh, put up barriers, put up uh, stumbling blocks for someone like this, who welcomes someone like this. And he talks about 
stumbling blocks and barriers that we might put up. And if something is causing your, you or a sibling to stumble, you should cut it out. Then Jesus tells of what do you do if someone doesn't cut it out? What if you do if someone who just continues to do things against the community? Well, there's a way that that's sort of ramped up. And if the whole community believes that it's really something that serious, then that person is is put out of the assembly. But they are continued to be sort of pursued. He just tells of, of uh, a shepherd, a good shepherd, who leaves 99 to go find the one and make sure that they are found. Peter asks, how many times I have to forgive a sibling who sins against me? Seven to whole times? And Jesus says, no, 77 times. Again, forgiveness is deeply important in Matthew's account. And then Jesus tells this story. He tells the story of uh, a king who the kingdom of heaven is like, who is working on settling accounts and finds that he has a slave who owes him 10,000 talents. Now, a talent is, in today's money, is worth about $750,000. So, 10,000 talents. This is dangerous. I'm going to be doing math right on camera. Um, that's what? 7 billion 500 million dollars? That's a, that's a pretty high debt, right? And the man comes before the king and says, there's no way, there's no way at all that I'll be able to, to pay this back. Give me more time, he asks. And the king says, I'll do better. I'll just forgive the debt. It's fine. There's no way you can possibly pay it. So it's it's all forgiven. Just don't even worry about it anymore. Great. That's wonderful. Except for that same slave goes to a fellow slave and says, Owe me what you, give me what you owe me. Now, this slave owes his other, the other slave, a um, hundred denarii. Now, a hundred denarii, uh, a denarii was worth about $125, so a hundred denarii would be $125,000. That's a pretty decent uh, debt. However, it's not even close to uh, $7.5 billion, right? But this is what he does. Well, this fellow slave says, I can't pay you right now begs him, pleads with him, give me a little bit more time. But this slave says, no, I won't forgive you, right? Have him arrested so that I can get my money. Well, the other slaves hear this and they go tell the king. And the king says, what are you doing? I just forgave you all of this just insane, incredible amount. And you're not willing to do the same for a much smaller amount with a fellow servant, fellow slave? No, because you're unmerciful, you're going to get punished, right? There's, he throws him into this prison and has him tortured until he pays his entire debt, which is never because he's going to be tortured, right? So my heavenly father will also do every one of you who do not forgive a brother or sister from your heart. Forgiveness is very important. And so Peter's question about how many times do I have really have to forgive a, a, a sibling of mine who does the same sin? Jesus' answer is, well, let me tell you about the great forgiveness that one slave had, and what does it mean if they don't give forgiveness at something minor? We should really take that to heart. We have been forgiven 
much. Just think of everything that you have ever done that's missing the mark of God's perfection, therefore a sin. Think of all the times you've been selfish. Think of all the times you've messed up where you've done something for yourself and not for someone else. Think of all the times you've lied. Think of all the, you know, like, I mean, we we can come up with a great long list and think that all of those things have been forgiven. They've been washed away, never to be heard of again, right? We still continue to learn from them and grow from that experience, but we're not held accountable for those things at least on a divine scale. And then think of all the petty, stupid things that we don't forgive one another for. And when we do that, this the, the, the implication of this parable is when we don't give that forgiveness to our sibling, We look as petty, small, and hateful as this slave. If there's going to be punishment, it's deserved punishment. The punishment doesn't come because we have done the thing in the first place. The punishment comes because we are not changed by the forgiveness. We don't offer that same forgiveness to someone else. So yes, forgiveness is important. Again, we talked about on Saturday just how often this comes up in Matthew's gospel. Forgive, forgive, forgive. If someone does something against you, you got to forgive them. You pray for forgiveness. You will be forgiven in the same measure that you are forgiven. You have been forgiven much. Now go and forgive much. We need to give each other grace, mercy. Because we have been shown grace and mercy. But it, sometimes it is really hard. Sometimes the just... Even in this parable, that they're just exorbitant amount. There's no way someone could pay back unless they're just insanely wealthy. Seven point five billion dollars of debt. It's just that's just crazy for an individual person. That's not, you know. Yes, I know that there are people in this world that that would not be a major thing, but for most of us. It would be. That smaller debt seems more manageable and therefore more real, right? You owed seven billion dollars. That just that's too big to really understand. But one hundred and fifty, uh, one hundred fifty thousand. That's half a house, right? That's that's something that you can understand. Not long ago, it was a whole house, but, you know, that's that's a different thing. You can understand that amount of debt. In the same way, like, the the forgiveness we have been given for everything we've ever done, that's, that's big. But that person who was mean to us, <laughs> it seems so much more real. And yet, the call is to forgive. To share the forgiveness that God has given to us. To deal with things well. To live together in, in unity and harmony and peace. In this assembly, this called together people. And there are real stakes, as we've been talking about for what it means if we do this and what it means if we don't do this. And often we don't do this. 
What does it tell to the people within our congregation? What does it tell to people outside of our congregation when we don't forgive one another? It sends a very clear, clear message. And a lot of people are done listening because of how we have not listened. So, what is the forgiveness that you have received? How does it, how is that tangible? Think of what it is on the on a cosmic scale, but also think about what it looks like in simple terms. In in real ways that you have experienced. What does that forgiveness look like? Where have you given that forgiveness? And where have you withheld that forgiveness? Where are those places, where are those relationships, where are those situations that you continue to refuse to give forgiveness? Forgiveness is complicated. There are situations in which continued relationship is not a healthy situation. Sometimes you do have to sever ties. Sometimes you do have to um, just get out of a relationship, especially if it's abusive in any way. But forgiveness can still be given. Forgiveness is something that often we do it's just on our side, right? We say, I'm not going to hold this against you. The king says, you may owe me $7.5 billion, but I'm not going to charge you for it. Right? It could have been that slave saying, you know what? You owe me this debt, but I'm just not going to hold, hold that up. It's a personal thing. You could never, ever, 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 ever talk to the person again for, and still give forgiveness. Because it's an internal change. So where is that not, where do you not want to give that? Or do you not want to give forgiveness? And why? Spend some time in, in journaling and in, in prayer and meditation and however you need to sort of work those things out. When you are ready, we will gather our hearts together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning and we will live this day in joy and praise. Loving God, as the rising sun chases away the night, so you have scattered the power of death in the rising of Jesus Christ, and you bring us all blessings in him. Especially we thank you for the ministry of word and sacrament. those who serve and care for others. The affection of our friends. Your call to love and serve one another. presence and power of your spirit. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for the forgiveness that we have received and our ability to give forgiveness.
Mighty God, with the dawn of your love, you reveal your victory over all that would destroy or harm, and you brighten the lives of all who need you. Especially we pray for the church in the Pacific region. Endangered species of animals and plants. Those who are isolated by sickness or sorrow. Those who suffer mental anguish. All who seek the way and truth of Christ. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Jeanette, Emily's sister. We pray for Lee, a friend of the Garlands, having open heart surgery. We pray for Kelly, recovering from knee surgery. For church members who are having upcoming surgeries. For Sue and Sherry, play school teachers who both lost their fathers. For Aquilo, who uh, whose cancer has returned, is undergoing treatment. For Richard, Tony's cousin, and his spouse. For those rebuilding after Hurricane Ian. For all those on our hearts and our minds, we pray that you would do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. Take all our doubts and uncertainties, O God, and fill us with such faith that we may be confident of your love and loyal in the service of him who died and yet lives for us, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now the God of peace be with us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information, including information about our Holy Week services. There's a Monday Thursday service, Thursday at 7. That will be at Chinese Presbyterian Church. On Friday, we will have a prayer vigil and labyrinth walk. That's all day at John Calvin Presbyterian. On Sunday, we will have Easter Sunday service. And then the following Sunday will be our Easter cantata with a luncheon afterwards. So join us for all of those things. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. Our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And um, what else do I say? Oh, yeah. And uh, you can subscribe to this on, on YouTube, on Substack, and on Spotify. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time.